Hi, this is Miss Cairo. This is lesson 3-6. And we're going to start off with creating area models for mixed number multiplication. So um, the materials that you need for this lesson, you do need your activity book and we're open up to page 81. And we are going to be creating two area models just like we were doing when we were multiplying fractions. And it involves shading with blue and red again. So if you have coloring utensils, um, blue and red, and like a black or a gray, that would work best. Coloring pencils would be awesome. If you have a marker, a blue and red marker, that works. If you don't have those materials, um, a pencil works just fine. And then also with these white Plain paper works best, so if you have computer paper around or a white sheet of paper, that works the best. But if binder paper, you just have binder paper or even your whiteboard, that will do as well. So go ahead and gather those materials. And again, we're on page 81. And at the top of page 81, the heading is area model for mixed number multiplication. We're going to be working with multiplication that involves mixed numbers. And again, a mixed number is a whole number and a fraction. And um, we'll start off with two area models that we'll be drawing out. And then we'll be learning how to just use multiplication to solve as well. So look for some patterns or some common rules that we might be able to follow when solving these two array um, multiplication problems, um, and we'll discuss it later, okay? So at the top of page, page 81, find that heading area model for mixed number multiplication, and then there's a word problem that goes along with it. So read along with me as I read it out loud. It says, a farmer has a rectangular field one and two thirds miles long and three fourths miles wide. What is the area of the field? Let's mark up this word problem with using the cube strategy. Let's underline the question. What is the area of the field? Let's circle these two numbers with their units. So one and two thirds miles long and three fourths miles wide. So go ahead and circle along with me. And let's box the keywords here. We are, we already know we're multiplying. What's the keyword here that will help us to determine in future word problems that we are in fact multiplying when we see this word? Which word or phrase are you looking at? I'm looking at area. Is that what you were thinking? Remember area means um, length times width. So anytime you see area, think of multiplication. All right, is yours all marked up like mine? And then it says, Melinda knows the area is one and two thirds times three fourths. She explains how she makes an area model to find this product. And then it says, Melinda is thinking this, I need to make a rectangle with side lengths, one and two third units and three fourth units. I start with two unit squares because one side of my rectangle will have a length greater than one unit. Ooh, okay. And then she does quite a bit of drawing that goes along with her thinking. Um, I like that the book provided this, but I, what I don't like is that it is pretty confusing, um, especially since we don't see the steps in which she took to draw this. So we're going to be drawing this together. Um, so what I'd like you to do is, ooh, maybe I won't adjust that. What I'd like you to do is on your piece of paper, I'd like you to draw an array. Oops. No, no, no. Where was I? Okay. Um, I would like you to draw an array, so a rectangular array. And I want it to be fairly large because we are going to be splitting it up into quite a bit of pieces. So make a fairly large array. All right. Does yours look like mine? And what we'll talk about is labeling the array based on what our two factors are. So above the array, somewhere somewhere at the top of your paper, leave a little bit of room for, um, for labeling. Our multiplication sentence is one and two thirds times three fourths. So write that somewhere on your piece of paper. And we're going to go one factor at a time, labeling, splitting, shading at a time. 
So let's work with this more complicated one, the mixed number one and two thirds. How can I represent one and two thirds using just one array? Well, it already said Melinda's thinking is that she's starting with a two unit square because one side of her rectangle will have a length that's greater than one unit. So we need to represent one whole and two thirds. And she does it on this side. She starts off with using it on this side. So let's go ahead and label it. One and two thirds and leave a little bit of space. Well, how we're gonna represent one and two thirds, we need to split it up into holes. So we're gonna split our array and do this along with me, split it up into two pieces, just using one line. Does yours look like mine? Let's do some more labeling. This represents one hole and this rep represents one hole. I need to first, I'm gonna take my one hole from one and two thirds and I'm going to represent that one hole's um, gonna be basically shaded in. And, and then I'm gonna take my two thirds and I'm gonna represent two thirds with my one hole, okay? So what we've learned is um, whatever we split with arrays, whatever we split one piece of the array into we have to do for all. So let's just work with our two thirds here, okay? How do I represent this one whole to um, be split and shaded to represent two thirds? Well, let's look at our denominator. What's our denominator here? Three, let's split it up into three parts. So one, two, ooh, three, let me fix that. And again, I want you to visualize as if this is, this part is one whole, and now we just split it up into thirds. And we're gonna use some shading, and let's use the color blue to represent two thirds. So I created three, three um, pieces based on my denominator. Now our shading, we're looking at our numerator. Our numerator for two thirds is two. So I'm gonna be shading in a total of two parts out of my total of three. I'm gonna just do my first top two pieces. I'm gonna shade using diagonal lines going one direction, and I'm gonna make it nice and neat and again, simple. So I want you to do the same, and yours should look exactly like mine. Does yours look like mine? Good. So we just shaded in two thirds, and now I need to shade in for one whole. Whatever we do to one part of the array, we have to do to the other. So even though I am gonna shade in base, I am gonna shade in, I already know I'm gonna shade in this whole one whole up here, but I want it to be in thirds because I already split my one whole down here into thirds. I have to do the same for my other, and you'll see why shortly. So again, let's split this up into three parts. One, two, three parts. And to represent one whole of, we're talking about one, one and two thirds of um, miles long, we're gonna shade in again with blue using those diagonal lines going the same direction. So all three parts here I'm gonna shade in. Okay, and so go ahead and copy mine. And what we just did, is let's do some more labeling. I shaded in one hole. One hole I split up into three parts. I shaded in three out of three parts here, and I shaded in two out of three parts here for my one hole. All right. In improper form, and as an improper fraction, underneath here, underneath one and two thirds, let's label how much we shaded in. So again, with fraction form, we're gonna have a numerator and a denominator. Our denominator is how many total pieces did we split our one holes into? Each hole is split up into three parts. So our denominator is three. And our numerator here is gonna be how much did we shade in? How many pieces total did we shade with blue? Go ahead and count. We did three here, two here, three, two, five total parts. One and two thirds is equivalent to, or the same as 
five thirds, and we clearly demonstrated that with our array. All right, so we got one and two thirds taken care of. Check, done. What about this three fourths? We're gonna label the other side of our array, three fourths, that's our other factor. And just like we were doing when we were multiplying fractions for this, what I want you to picture, I want you to picture um, a blank array. Try and erase this from your mind. Don't look at the shading and the splitting that we did for one and two thirds. Don't look at the shading, look at it as if it's two separate things for now, okay? Basically what we're doing is we're gonna be um, splitting and shading three fourths and what we're trying to figure out is what is three fourths of one and two thirds? So this is what I'm picturing in my head, a blank box. You don't have to do this, just watch me. And we know how to do this. How many total parts should we split our box into for three fourths? Th four total parts, our denominator is four, and we're gonna use vertical lines to represent this. So I'm gonna use three vertical lines to split up into one, two, three, four parts. And then I'm going to be shading with red, and I want basically how many total pieces out of four should be shaded in to represent three-fourths? Three parts. So that's what I'm visualizing in my head that's going to be. So if that's kind of hard for you to picture like a blank box, that's what it's going to look like. So watch me as I do it, and then you're going to do it as well. So I'm going to use three vertical lines drawn in to split this array into four parts. So watch as I do it. One two, three, four parts. And again, the goal is to make them as even as possible. One, two, three, four parts. And again, I'm looking at them as long vertical pieces. One, two, three, four. So go ahead and do that on yours. And just like I did over here, we're gonna be shading in three parts to represent our three fourths here. And we're gonna use, oops, I actually did it the wrong direction. We're gonna do the other direction of lines with red um, so that we can count, clearly count how many pieces are shaded in twice. So get your red utensil ready. And if you don't have that, your pencil will work just fine. We're gonna shade in three out of our total parts. So I'm gonna do one part here, two parts here, three parts here, and they have to go the whole length of the part. So watch as I do it first and then you're welcome to join. So one part, two parts, three parts shaded in, representing three fourths of our array. Go ahead and now you try it. They should go the whole length. And again, think simplicity. The simpler and the clearer, the better. And now we have a finished array. And now we're figuring out, well, based on my array, what is one and two thirds times three fourths? Well, I started off with one and two thirds, and then I shaded in what three fourths of one and two thirds is. And how we can solve this is we're gonna do an equal sign. And we are going to put it into improper fraction form first. All right, so what our denominator is going to tell us is how many total pieces was each original whole split up into? And, oh, oh, I forgot to do this. We should have done this. Do you see in the drawings here that this line is much more bold than the rest? It's that middle line that runs horizontally that broke up our one, our each of our holes. So go back and make that line really, really thick, or not really, really thick, but much thicker. And again, the reason why we're making it thicker is we split up one and two thirds, we basically had two holes going on here. Here was one hole and here was another. So one hole, one hole, and then we shaded in and then we were asking what three fourths of each hole was. All right, does yours look like mine? All right, now going back to what our answer is, do an equal sign and a fraction bar. Our denominator, let's work with that first. Our denominator is how many total pieces was each hole split up into? 
So you can either choose this hole or this hole. Let's just work with this top one actually. Look at this top hole up here. How many total pieces are there? Go ahead and count. Did you count 12? I got 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 is our denominator. It's not 24. Remember, we're not counting this whole array because this whole array was split up into one hole here and one hole for this part. So one hole was this whole part and one hole was this whole part. So 12 pieces are holes were split up into. And now our numerator is how many total pieced, pieces did we shade twice? So we're gonna go back and we're gonna be asking ourselves which pieces are shaded in with red and with blue. And again, if you weren't using the different colors, you're looking for what pieces did we shade in twice? One, two, three. Did you get 15? I got 15. 15 pieces and I'll show you where they were at. I'll circle them in a different color. These were the pieces that were shaded in twice with red and with blue. And that's circled in green. And now we have our answer. One and two thirds is equal to, sorry, one and two thirds times three fourths is equal to 15 twelfths. And 15 twelfths can be simplified. And we can use division to, um, to solve. Let's see what... Uh, Melinda's thinking was when I rewrite the factor one and two thirds as a fraction, I can see that the product is the product of a new of the numerators over the product of the denominators. And here was her thinking one and two thirds times three fourths is equal to five thirds times three fourths, which is equal to five twelfths. She simplified five twelfths to five fourths. So how did she do that? Well, do 15 and 12 share a common factor? They do. The factors of 15 are 1, 3, 5, and 15. The factors of 12 are 1, 3, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. They both share a common factor of 3. So we can divide both of those by 3. And when we do that, when we multiply across, our equivalent fraction here is 5 fourths. Remember, we're always striving for the simplest fraction possible. And 5 fourths can be rewritten as a mixed number. 4 goes into 5 one time with 1 remaining. And 4 is still our denominator. And now we arrive at our answer. The farmer's area of the field is 1 and 1 fourth square miles long. And we used an array to solve this problem. The thing that I want you to take away from this, take a look, let's rewrite our, our addition, or sorry, re, let's rewrite our multiplication sentence, one and two thirds times three fourths, and we said that that's equal to one and one fourth. Is one and one fourth bigger than one and two thirds? Which one's a larger number, this one? or this one, it is smaller. It has to be smaller because we were looking for what's three fourths of one and two thirds. There's no way for us for that, there was gonna be no way for us to get an answer that was larger than one and one fourth because we were only working with one and two thirds to begin with. So we took one and two thirds and then we shaded in just portions of one and two thirds. We were just shading in what three fourths of one and two thirds was. So what I want you to take away from this is if we're multiplying a mixed number times a fraction, our number has to be, sorry, our answer has to be smaller than the factor that we're starting with. It has to be smaller than this mixed number because we're just taking a portion of it. All right, I hope, I, I hope you followed along with that. And if not, we'll be looking at more patterns soon. Um, let's continue on with the page. And it says, discuss this model for one and two fifths times one and one half. 
and they already did it for us. I don't like that they already did it for us because it's already kind of confusing just even for me as a teacher to look at work that's already done. Let's draw it out together. So either flip over or draw a line. We're going to start a whole new problem. We're going to write out the equation. Um, I'm going to make mine smaller on your piece of paper. One and two fifths times one and one half. And we're going to use an array to solve this. Again, you need a fairly large array. So go ahead and draw a square array on your piece of paper and we're gonna go factor by factor um, one at a time so let's just start off with let's start off with one and one half one and one half and I'm gonna label one and one half up here I'm gonna leave a little bit of space though as you can see so you leave space as well how can I shade and split to represent one and one half well I know it's gonna have to be larger than one I'm gonna have to shade in one hole over here and then I'm going to have to shade in one half of the hole over here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to split my array into two parts and I'm going to split it and I'm going to sh um, like kind of backtrack over this line a few times so that I make it kind of bold. So I'm represent representing one hole over here and one hole over here. And let's kind of um, label to represent that right now. So one hole here one hole here, one and one. Let's start off with this one half. How do we shade in what one half of this one hole is? One half of this one hole is. So we do a little arrow and do a one half. Half of one hole. Let's look at our denominator. Our denominator is two, so we're gonna split it up into two parts. And now get your, let's do red. Get your red utensil ready. And if you don't have it, um, diagonal lines are going to work just fine. Let's shade in to represent one half of one whole by looking, again, it's numerator is one. We're just shading in how many parts? One part. And let's use diagonal lines going this direction like this. So watch me do it first. And again, simple is best. So go ahead and shade like me. One half is represented. Let's represent one hole as well. Okay, so one hole needs to be shaded in. Remember, just like with the last one, whatever we do to one part of our array, we have to do to the other. So I have to shade in, sorry, I have to split my hole into two parts as well. I'm working with the denominator here of two. I need equal parts for my hole as well. So we're going to split that up into two parts. And I know that if I'm splitting up into two parts and I'm representing one whole, I'm gonna shade in the whole um, section. I'm gonna represent in shade two parts out of a total of two. So one whole is equal to two halves, we know that. And let's use red again, same diagonal lines going the same directions, same direction. And now I have one and one half represented with my array, one whole shaded in, and then one half shaded in. Does yours look like mine? I hope I'm not losing you. Okay, so we just did, let's go back to our equation. Check, we just represented one and one half. Let's get our black pen or your black utensil ready again. Let's label this side now with our other factor of one and two fifths. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of space and you should too. One and two fifths, how I can represent an array that represents one and two fifths, I'm gonna to have to split up into two holes. So to represent, I'm gonna be shading for to represent one hole and then splitting and shading to represent two fifths. So I'm gonna just split it into two parts, two holes, and I'm gonna make it bold again so that it's clear that this is gonna be one hole and this is gonna be one hole. And again, um, just like with the last ones, you're gonna ignore the previous lines and shading that we did to represent one and one half. So ignore the red lines, ignore the vertical lines. Picture this in your head, which I just did. Two pieces here. So one hole here, one hole here. And let's label 
and then shade. I'm gonna have this be one hole and this be one hole. And I wanna represent what two fifths of one hole is. So I'm gonna represent two fifths over here. So I'm gonna draw two fifths over here. And then I'm gonna be representing one hole that's gonna be five fifths. So let's work with our two fifths first. How many pieces should I split my holes into to represent two fifths? So let's look at our denominator. Five pieces and here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna do long lines, horizontal lines. Oops, I should make them a little smaller. Should I make them as easy as possible? Watch me do it first. One, two, three, four, five total parts. And watch how I did it over here. I took my one hole and I did one part, two parts, three parts, four parts, five parts. And those each represent one fifth each. And they go the whole length. So go ahead and do that with me. Whatever I do to one hole or to one part of my two fifths, I have to do to the other. I also have to make my one hole into fifths because again, anything with our rays, they have to be equal parts. So I'm gonna split this hole up here into five parts as well. One, two, three, four, five and try to make them as even as possible and again I'll represent it over here as well this is my blank thinking this is independent of one and one half so I have one fifth one fifth one fifth one fifth and one fifth and the same for that hole as well these pieces go the whole length from here to here and now let's do some shading to represent what one and two fifths is I'm gonna change to the color blue. I'm gonna switch my position of my diagonal lines and watch me as I do it first and then you'll copy, okay? So one fifth goes from all the way over here, one piece goes the whole length of it. So I just shaded a one fifth here and I'm gonna have to go all the way down to five fifths to represent one whole. So this whole side this whole tarp part is going to be shaded in with blue opposite diagonal lines to represent one whole. Five fifths I just shaded in. Now I need to shade in, so go ahead and copy mine. And if you need to pause, go ahead and pause. Now I need to shade in two fifths. And what two fifths is going to look like, look at my blank one over here. It's going to be two pieces out of our total of five. So watch my cursor first. This is going to be one piece or one fifth. And this is going to be one piece or one fifth. And I'm going to leave the other three fifths blank because, again, I'm just representing two fifths for this hole. So watch as I do it first. One fifth. Two fifths. And I did it the whole width of our array. All right, your turn. Go ahead and copy mine. And now let's do some solving. What does this array represent in fraction form? So underneath your array, let's do an equal sign and let's put it in improper fraction form first and then we'll turn it into a mixed number if needed. All right, so our answer is going to be in fraction form, like I said first, let's talk about our denominator. How many pieces was each hole split up into using this array? Well, first of all, how many holes do I have here? I have four holes. Take a look at them. Here's one hole. Here's one hole. Here's one hole. And here's one hole. We split it up into four holes two holes for each of our mixed numbers, uh, giving us a total of four. So let's just take a, look, take a look at this top left hole. How many total pieces is each hole split up into is what I'm asking myself for our denominator. So let's count. What did you get? 10, 10 pieces. Each hole split up into 10 pieces. Great. 
And now our question is, now that we know our denominator, our numerator is going to be how many pieces in all, with all four of these holes, did we shade in twice using the diagonal lines? So how many were shaded in twice using red and blue? So hopefully yours is clear enough. And if not, you can always go back into your book and it looks like this purplish. I'm going to count starting all the way up here. One, two, three. Did you get 21? Yes. Okay. And if you don't see it, I'm going to circle it in green. We just counted this section of our array and I box it in green. This was the area that was shaded in twice. And there's a total of 21 pieces that are shaded in twice. And that is our answer using our array. 1 and 2 fifths times 1 and 1 half is equal to 21 tenths. But let's turn it in. This is an improper fraction. Let's turn it into a um, mixed number using division. So again, with division, we're asking ourselves 21 divided by 10 is equal to, well, 10 goes into 21 two times. And when I multiply, we get 20. We are left with our remainder of one. What's our mixed number here? Two and one tenths. Does that make sense? Is that reasonable that I got two and one tenths? Hmm. One and two fifths times one and one half is equal to two and one tenths. What do you notice about our product compared to our factors? Were you expecting it to get a larger number than both our factors? One and two fifths times one and one half is equal to two and one tenths. This is the biggest number out of all. And I'm thinking, yes, that is reasonable. Think of it like this. This is worth more than one whole. This is worth more than one whole. Um, I know from my background knowledge, one times one is equal to one. Um, and then popping up to our next whole numbers, two times two is equal to four holes. And our answers, this is less, this is basically, these two numbers are in between here. More than one holes, um, each factor is worth, and less than two holes is what each fraction is worth. So it is reasonable to me that we got an answer that was in between, it was larger than one, but it was less than four. My answer is reasonable based on my reasoning skills with comparing um, and rounding these two numbers. And again, I hope that kind of transfers for you guys. If you're feeling a little confused, this will take some practice, but again, look for those patterns because we're gonna be solving lots and lots of problems similar to this. All right, thanks for following along. We will tackle how to solve these using straightforward multiplication soon. Until then, see you next time.